Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Hey guys, welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had an absolutely amazing trading day yesterday. For those of you new to the channel, we look at the same 10 to 12 futures markets every day, identifying potential breakout trades and uh, and reversal trades from an educational perspective. Uh, make sure you click that subscribe button so you get the alerts and the updates as we have them. For those of you that are not new to the channel, welcome back. And do me a favor, leave a comment, leave a like, leave something so that the computers know that there are human beings that are watching this bad boy. All right, let's dive right in. So yesterday was a nice, big moving day uh, in the S&P uh, as we had a very strong breakdown out of this level. We had talked about uh, yesterday that breakdown and staying short until we got to one of these levels down below. Now you can see that, uh, that we had a potential reversal at this area right here. Um, and price came to this as a confirmation entry and then continued to blow right through the level. Now, technically, if you follow the exact rules of this confirmation entry, because we use the 15 minute chart, uh, this does get you filled and then out almost immediately, um, about an hour later. So sometimes that's going to happen. Uh, no big deal. Theoretically, you should still have been short based on our level from the prior day. Uh, and so if you, uh, you, if you, you know, got out of your short or whatever you did, it came down, but look at what it did. It came and hit our next level. And then at the very end of the day, we got a very strong rally out of that next level. Now that level that hit towards the end of the day wound up actually working very well. Uh, went from 2617, 2638, uh, a pretty good move out of that area. We've now come back down and started another rally um, back up. And so today to, the, to me seems to be a bit more potential to be uh, a little bit more on the flat side. But one of the things that I tweeted out yesterday um, was taking a look at uh, at something interesting here was the volume yesterday. And I found the volume yesterday to be pretty interesting. And I don't normally talk about volume, but I want to, I want to show volume here, uh, on the hourly chart because it, it, it really was very interesting to me to see, um, what the volume picture yesterday looked like. Um, because typically when you see a strong, uh, market, uh, market down day, you see way more volume than you do on an up day. Um, and as I look at yesterday, um, we had a huge volume surge at the end of the day. Look at this huge volume surge at the end of the day. Now that volume surge that we got on the end of the day was our biggest green candle of the day, right? Um, and and but for the most of the day, if I look at you know, earlier in the day it was actually not as high as it was the prior couple of days. Whereas oftentimes when there's a, when there's a true, you know, big down day, you see, and we'll go to a daily chart here. You see oftentimes on those big down moves, those big down days is where you see those huge volume spikes, right? If you can see this volume spike, volume spike yesterday was, you know, we had a down day, but it, I wouldn't consider it a huge volume spike. Um, like we've seen in the past. Now, we may continue some, but I think yesterday was, I didn't change my big picture perspective. My four hour, um, my four hour direction didn't change. Uh, my, my overall bias that I'm a buyer didn't really change. However, uh, this, the, the move down yesterday was not surprising if you understand momentum. Um, momentum was weakening in that four hour chart. We had come to an, a, an area of supply slash resistance. And so, you know, price fell from that zone. So we, we did get a move down. So now what are we looking at for today? Well, when I look at today, um, I'm going to zoom in and go to the 15 minute time period here. We are coming back to this little area here, which, which was, you know, one of where we consolidated a little bit yesterday. And we're coming back to that area, but fairly weekly. Um, one of the things I always tend to do is look and see where were we at the European market open. And the European market open typically tells me uh, a pretty good story. 
And so I'm going to wrap my lines around this area here, uh, which is the pivot. And if we get a pullback into here, uh, that to me sounds like it may be a decent, uh, a decent opportunity to get long uh, on a pullback into this region. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, how well it'll hold, but I do like the fact that, that the last, uh, that, that, that this swing low was able to get us a, a slightly higher high. Um, you know, we, we've, we've, we've now put in these two higher highs. This is the same swing low. Uh, a lot of people would say that this over here on the right is a retest of this on the left. I would say that this over here on the left was formed during very you know, poor market hours, and this could be a better opportunity. So I think there's a chance we could get a roll over here for a move up, but I feel like today may be a pretty good chop day overall. So that's a level to look for today in the S&P. When I look at the NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ very similar. Now, we didn't have that same buy area in the NASDAQ. Uh, we also still have a sell area up above us. In the NASDAQ, I would... Um, still be a little bit cautious you know the nasdaq not quite um not quite as strong as the s p um this area here now this little wick over wick level is something for me to pay attention to and this is where this wick overlaps this wick now um this is a, a move down and then there's a rally up out of there there's a drop, a little bit of basing in there before then that drop. That's that little wick over wick area where if we do get a, a, a rally off the S&P level, then this might be a level that is, you know, when price reaches this area, this could be a target for our S&P level. It could also be a short potential in the NASDAQ if you are, you know, more on the bearer side. So if you're more on the bearer side, I would look to the NASDAQ. If you're more on the bullish side, I would look to the S&P. And you guys have to make that determination based on your trading rules. I'm laying out both levels. Me personally, I think that the big picture still tells me to be a buyer. But I do want to at least present both opportunities, and then you guys can make your own trading decisions. Obviously, that's the way this, that's the way this game is played. Um, next, crude oil. So crude oil has rallied back into the level that we identified yesterday. Um, we're into that level as we speak. Now, I, what I don't love is the fact that we've based in front of the level. Remembering that basing in front of a level, what does it do to our profit margin when we base in front of a level? All right, think about that logically. Basing in front of that level will reduce the probability of that level working uh, because we're coming in with such low momentum. The second thing it does is it really takes that, that uh, you know, reward to risk and kind of flips it on its head. So basing before a level is a double whammy because it, it hurts the arrival and it hurts the reward to risk. So, it, so when we think about our trade optimization plan, uh, which, is a, which is the scoring system that we use to evaluate the quality of our trades, the, the trade optimization plan, the score goes down significantly when we are <clears throat> when we're looking at basing before a level. So this level, while we had identified it, doesn't really meet the same trade criteria and the same rules based on the basing that has happened below it. Uh, gold. So looking here at gold, um, we are still in between our levels of demand and supply. Uh, did not reach either one of those levels, so I'm going to leave those in place. I don't want to. I don't have a whole lot to add today in gold. I'm gonna kind of speed up a little bit because a lot of these uh, a lot of these currency positions are are ones that I've spoken about in the past that we've not quite reached the levels, um, but they are still all uh, all in there and all valid. Now the bond market yesterday. Hope somebody um, was paying attention and caught this bond short. We came up and just gave it a kiss, Mwah. kiss to the level, and then strong move away in the bond. So uh, if you caught that bond short. Uh, then that was uh, that. Hopefully, that one is 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 making you happy uh, because it's uh, it's moved uh, it's moved well out of our level. And now, what you know, what uh, what do you do on it now? Well, if you did get short, now it's time to take your stop, move it down above this pivot. Uh, you could even move it to here if you want to be a little bit more aggressive where we have this wick over wick supply. If you missed getting in on it, I think there's a chance we're going to get another rally back up. And you may be able to get short uh, right up in here at that wick over wick supply if you missed it and you want another another bite at it. Now, since this was touched, I need to change it because it's still a valid level, but it's now a confirmation entry uh, since it has been touched. 
Aussie. So the Aussie dollar, uh, we actually came down to our, we, we, we broke down, uh, had a really nice move in the Aussie price, came back up into our short and then dropped away, came back up a second time. Now, obviously, the second time it comes back in, it's not going to be uh, valid the second time through simply because we had based in it a couple of times there. So uh, it, it gave us a nice little two to one move out of that level. And now it's forming another uh, little base starting to rally higher. Uh, we are still, if I look at the four hour chart, technically still uh, a seller, although the base that we've put in on as a, as buyers is pretty significant and something to pay attention to. So for now, what I, you know, when I, as I look at this, uh, going to the hourly chart, it, it almost feels like we've put in a little bit of the proverbial double bottom base. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Um, but I think that there's a chance that we could we could see price rally out of here uh, if we get above here on some decent volume. And, and obviously on futures volume is, is going to be the only way to tell. Um, but we could, I think, rally up. None of these levels of supply really scare me. So if you wanted to be a buyer, I think the key is here you wait for a quality level of demand to be put in and then you get long or you trade the breakout. Now, right now, we're sitting at what could be a, a little bit of a 15 minute reversal point right in here. Uh, and if we break above there, I think there's room to run. All right, next in the Euro, the Euro is continuing that move down. Uh, we did not get back to our levels. So I've got nothing to add in the Euro. And the Canadian, we are actually starting to rally up to what could be a potential level of the Canadian. But knowing, look at this little area here that we've put in as our opposing level. So that opposing level now reduces our reward to risk. So you need to evaluate whether this trade still meets your entry criteria or not uh, based on reward to risk. I'm still technically okay with it, um, but I'm going to give it uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of wiggle room into that uh, into that region. Japanese yen. We did not quite make it back to our reversal point trade, so I'm going to leave this one in place. Uh, I think there's a chance we'll come back up and retest this area here. But for now, the yen, not a lot for me to add. Uh, and then the Great British Pound. So the Great British Pound, we'd had a short level uh, up above. When I move this to the four hour, uh, our next level for short isn't until way the heck up here. Uh, everything here tells me I'm better off being a buyer. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit, I think there's a good potential for price to run all the way up to here. So looking at this on a smaller time period, call it a 15 minute chart, I think we've actually put in a really nice pivot right here. Uh, and so you're chasing a little bit, but you could get long somewhere uh, up above here. Any, any pullbacks, I think, give you an opportunity to get long for continuation of that price movement. So as far as today goes, um, you know, I, I think that today could be fairly flat, not a tremendous amount of movement. Uh, I do still think that there's a good opportunity if we get a pullback in that S&P level. But how was your day yesterday? Right? It was a big movement day yesterday. How was your day? Leave it in the comments down below. I always like to hear about uh, what people's days were. Uh, if you had a great day, what do you think attributed to that? If you, uh, if you felt like you struggled, what, uh, what, what caused that? So leave that in the comment section down below. If you guys have any questions, please send me an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day.